hello guys what's up welcome back here it's your boy manuel and in today's video we're going to see how to manage users in linux we're going to talk about things like you know who is a user in linux what are the different types of users you can find in linux and the role that each user plays in linux so this is an extremely important video if you're someone who's you know studying linux if you're studying to become a devops engineer a cyber security engineer it doesn't matter this is an important video so first thing first who is a user in Linux in Linux a user is an individual or a process that can access and interact with the Linux operating system based on the permission that they have so it can be an individual that individual can be a developer that individual can be a DevOps engineer or that individual can be a system engineer and they will have the permissions to interact with your Linux operating system. Another thing you have to know is that in Linux, the different types of users you have the root user you have regular users you have system users and you have service users or you usually call them service account it's also important for you to know that some users in linux will require a password in order to log in into the linux system why some users would not you also have to know that each user in linux has what they call a user id you commonly see it as UID that stands for user ID and this is the ID that's assigned to a user during creation so if you create a user called Emmanuel Emmanuel is assigned an ID and IDs are very very important because they can help you track and understand what a specific user is doing on your Linux operating system when it comes to permissions in Linux users have different permissions uh, they have different permissions to access files they have different permissions to access directories and they have different permissions to access resources for example a developer may have the permission to read and edit a file but we not have the permission to delete that file but a devops engineer would have the permission to read edit and delete a file so users in Linux all don't have the same permissions permissions are assigned to them based on their tax and responsibilities another thing you have to know is that users are assigned a personal directory and that directory is found inside of slash home remember in my last video I said if you access the file system and you go to slash home inside of slash home you will see personal directories of each user that's on your system and I also said these directories are known as user home directories and when we accessed my Linux operating system and we went to my slash home directory we could see the user home directory of Ubuntu and we also said that some users do not have their user home directory inside of slash home for example the root user has its user home directory inside of slash root in Linux you also have to know that some users are provided with a share interface which they use to interact with the Linux operating system and this share interface can either be bash Z share or just share you also have to know that users can belong to one or more groups for example uh, you may have a group for developers you may have another group for DevOps engineers let's say you have a DevOps engineer called John you can add John inside of this group called DevOps and you can also add John inside of this group called developers so John would have the permissions that DevOps engineers have and he will also have the permissions that developers have in Linux there's a specific place you can go to have an idea of all the users that you have on your Linux operating system and that is etc slash password another place you can go to see the password of your user is inside of the slash etc slash shadow right so if you can cut this etc slash password you would have information about 
your users and if you can cut you know etc slash shadow you'll be able to see their past words i also want you to know that in linux there are different types of users you have the root user you have regular users you have system accounts and you have service accounts so we're going to go through these users and understand the role they play on a linux operating system the first time we're going to look at a super users account or root account the first thing i want you to know about this type of users in linux is that they have full system access the super user has unrestricted access to all files directories commands and resources on your linux operating system meaning they can do anything on your linux operating system they can access all the files that are on your linux operating system they can access all the directories that are on your linux operating system they can run commands they have access to all the resources that are on your you know, linux operating system the second thing you have to know is that this account is usually referred to as root so whenever someone is talking of the root account i want you to know that they're talking of the super user account another characteristic of root account is that they have a user id of zero and i'm going to show you how to see this user id when we going to be creating users in Linux. Another thing you have to know is that they have the highest privilege in Linux. So they have the highest permissions in Linux. And because they have the highest permissions in Linux, they can do things like modify system files and configuration. So if they feel like the system needs to be changed, they can do it. Uh, they can install software, they can remove software, and they can manage, you know, softwares in general, something that other users Users cannot do. Uh, they can add, remove, and modify user account and permissions. What this point is trying to say is that a super account can create other accounts and they can assign permissions to users and they can also take permissions from those users and they can delete those users if they want to. That's how powerful this account is. Uh, they can also change ownership and permission of files or directories. So they can create a directory and they can assign that directory for example to John and they can also take that directory from John and assign it to Peter they have the powers you know to do that they can start stop and modify system processes they have the powers to do that as well don't worry we're going to talk about what system processes are another thing you have to know about by user account is that you can log in directly into a Linux system as a super user account either using password or using a key and I made a video on on how to SSH where I showed you how to use you know a password and how to use a key so if you have the password of root you can use that password to you know log in into a Linux you know server another thing you have to know that's important is that your default share is the bin slash bash share or the bin slash share even though this is the most powerful account in Linux there are some risks in using this type of account so do different things on your Linux operating system. The first one is mistake. If you make a mistake and you delete critical files or you do some you know misconfiguration on your system, it can take down your entire application or database or whatever you know service you're running on that system. The second thing is that is a target for attackers or hackers, right? That's a target for hackers. So if you don't protect this account and and, you know you store the credentials of this account somewhere that hackers can find it trust me they would find it and they will use it to get into your system and because they are super users they can literally do anything on that system including deleting your application deleting other users from the system changing the password they can do a lot of things on your system so if you're thinking of using this account to do different things on your system make sure that the password is stored somewhere that no one has access to or most importantly don't even use this account to do things instead of using the root account to do specific things on your Linux uh, system this is what you can do instead you can use the sudo for administrative tasks instead of logging in as root what this point is trying to say is that you can assign administrative permission to a regular user and they can assume these permissions and use it whenever they want to do something specific right by doing this, it will keep your account
account you know safe right another thing is that keeping the root account secure with a strong password or you know disabling direct login especially for servers you can create an extremely powerful password uh, that it will be difficult for someone to guess or for someone to crack or you can just disable login into this account so you cannot log in into this account right you have to log in as a regular user then you have to use the command sudo and you switch to the root user and you do whatever thing you want to do or you may just you know use the sudo command to borrow some powers from the root account and use it to do you know whatever thing you want to do on that system the second type of account or user you will find on a linux system is the regular user or the regular account uh, some people also refer to this as the standard account regular accounts are designed for everyday tasks and general system usage for example if you log in into the server every day to check logs you know to deploy applications to do some basic administrative tasks like run some scripts you will use a regular account and another thing you have to know is that their permissions are limited right when we're talking about a super account we saw that they had unrestricted access to the entire system regular accounts are not like that their permissions are limited and the reason why they limit their permissions for you know security so if someone hacks into the system using the credentials of a regular account they are only limited to what that regular account can do if the regular account can already create files they cannot delete files they cannot delete anything on that linux operating system including even changing their own password when a regular account is created regular account is assigned a user id and their user ids always starts from 1000 right so you'll see uh, 1000 and you know one you see 1002 you see 1003 you see you no know, 1000 1004 and so on and so forth another thing is that they all have personal directories inside of the slash home directory and these directories are known as what user home you know directories right and this is where they have all their files right this is where they have you know all their configurations and you know this is where they have all their data so their data their files their configurations are stored inside of the user home directory now at times you may create a regular user and they will not come with the user home directory right don't worry i'm going to show you how to fix that just as super users regular users are also provided a share for running commands and scripts and it's usually you know bash uh, bin you know slash bash or uh, bin slash share right so they usually provided this but most of the time you're going to see a bin slash bash and i'm going to show you how to know the type of share that a specific user in linux is using as i said earlier they have limited access to do certain things on the server like for example they cannot perform administrative tasks without elevated privileges meaning that if they want to add users for example they don't have the permission to add a user unless they're given the pseudo permission to be able to add a user so the third type of account in linux is what they call a system account the first thing i want you to know about system accounts is that they are used for system operations or service management uh, not tied to human users uh, they also have a user id their own user id is usually below 1000 so you're going to see something like this 999 that's how you're going to see their user id and i'm going to show you, you know how their user id looks like the main purpose of system accounts is to run background processes you know run system demons or services like you know web servers and databases that's kind of their main use right another thing you have to know is that you cannot log in into a system account they don't have you know login access right and if you you know look into their configuration you're going to see that they have s bin slash no login or the s bin slash false to prevent any direct logins one thing i love about this type of accounts is that they are created automatically you have for example you know the daemon general account for background processes then you have the nobody uh useful unprivileged and anonymous operations on your linux operating system so these are just examples of some system accounts that are inside of your linux operating system and i'm going to show you exactly how to find them the fourth type of account we're going to talk about is the service account now the service account is similar to the you know system account right 
and at times some people will just say the three accounts in Linux they will just say you have regular accounts you know you have super accounts and you have service accounts and they will not mention system accounts because system accounts at times they tend to behave like service accounts so the first thing I want you to know about service account is that they're designed to run specific services or applications on your Linux operating system like for example databases and servers and an example of a service account would be ww dash data you know for apache you also have mysql for mysql server and you also have sshd for the ssh daemon so these are examples of service accounts that you can find on your linux you know operating system they are also assigned a user id it's also below 1000 as i said earlier you're going to see similarities between them between service account and you know system accounts also they don't have a login so you cannot use their credentials to log in into a server because you know they don't have an interface you know for you to log in and if you look at the, their configuration you are also going to see you know the s bin slash no login or the bin slash false their permissions are only limited to the service that they are running apart from that they cannot do anything so they are often created automatically during the installation of softwares and they can also be created by administrators right that's kind of something you have to remember for the permissions they have this type of account or this type of users they are only uh, limited to the files and the directories they need to run a specific service or they need to function properly they don't have full access similar to system accounts who also do not have full access service account also do not have full access as well so they're only limited to the files and directories that they will need to run a specific service properly i know you're probably asking yourself but emmanuel this account accounts are the same you know uh the system and you know service account they're the same but let's see some differences let's start with the let's start with this you know system account right used for generic system level and background operations for example you have the demon being and you know nobody now service account dedicated to running specific services or applications that's your role right so a system account is a general purpose type of account used to run background processes service accounts they are used to run specific services or you know applications that are on your uh, system another thing is that let's look at this it says system account broad scope supporting overall system functionality or legacy processes right uh, service account narrow scope so it has fewer permissions uh, tied to a single service or application ensuring isolation that's kind of the difference you know between the two another thing is creation often pre-created by the operating system during installation as i said earlier you can be installing your operating system and you know it would create a system account for you automatically but uh, service account usually created when installing a specific service or application or software right so that's kind of you know the difference between the two so you notice that even though they have similar characteristics and they kind of sound like they used to do the same thing but deep inside they have different functionalities and they are used for different purposes so guys that's what a user is in Linux and that's the different types of users that we have in Linux in our next video we are going to see how create users create groups assign them permissions put them in groups take permissions from them delete users delete groups and stuff like that so thank you guys for watching this video please do not forget to like share and see you in my next video bye